How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, I'm going to tell you how to start playing Flesh and Blood in 20. 22. What this video isn't is a how to play guide, but if you are looking for that, definitely check out the link in the description down below to the Talarian Community College how to play video. I highly recommend it. He is a personal friend of mine, absolutely fantastic content creator, and definitely go check out that how to play video. What we are going to talk about today are the best ways for you to start playing Flesh and Blood. And what that means is we're going to talk about all of the different products that are available out there, new products, old products, what products I recommend to you as a brand new player, what's going to be like the easiest onboarding process for you if you are looking to start playing Flesh and Blood. Because honestly, there are a lot of options right now and it can be a little bit difficult, a little bit daunting, you know, trying to decide which one you want to go for over others. And there are some that are just like really expensive that you might not understand why they're expensive and why they are not good value for you to pick up right now. So let's start at the most obvious place, starter decks. This is the Ira Welcome Deck. This product should be given out for free at your local game store. So this is the first product I want to talk about. It's literally free. Now, that's not to say that every local game store has these. And um, it's not to say that you know some of them aren't trying to sell them, but they should be giving them out for free. I should also note that older versions of this do have a premium price on the secondary market. So if you find a 2018 version of this, as opposed to like a 2021 or 2022 plus version, you can see that they're a little bit expensive, but newer versions should be given out for free at your LGS. So this is the first place I think you should start. These decks were made specifically to teach the fundamentals of Flesh and Blood. There's not a lot of fancy stuff in here, though the hero here, Ira, is actually quite good. But um, this is just like the best way to start, especially since it has the best possible price. It's free. Next, we're going to talk about all of the pre-constructed Blitz decks. Now, there are currently nine of these available across three different sets. Basically, these are um, were released in tandem with booster sets. And we'll talk about the booster sets separately after we talk about all the starters here. But um, I think it's really important to talk about these because these next to the free Ira Welcome decks are the best way to start. Well, sort of. There might be one other option as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. But these. They're, they're pretty hard to beat, right? They're, they're $12. These are 12 US dollars and they contain, you know, fully built, ready to play flesh and blood decks. Now the ones that I'm showing you here, these are from the Monarch expansion and therefore have Monarch heroes. We have Sir Bolton, the Light Warrior. We have fan favorite Prism, the Light Illusionist. We have Lady Levia, the Shadow Brute. And we also have Chain. Now, these, uh, by the way, Chain is a Shadow Rune Blade. I was gonna say, these ones are a little bit interesting because they contain heroes that have achieved Living Legend status, which means they're basically rotated out of the, the format that they achieved Living Legend status. So, Chain here has achieved Living Legend status in Classic Constructed, so you are not able to play him in Classic Constructed. On top of that, this deck also has Seeds of Agony, which is a banned card in multiple formats. However, you can still play Chain in certain formats like Ultimate Pit Fight and Commoner and a lot of other formats. So just keep that in mind when purchasing this deck. Chain has achieved Living Legend status in Classic Constructed. It means he's a really, really good hero. And then also we have Prism, who hasn't yet achieved Living Legend status, but at the time of this recording, she is only two points away from achieving Living Legend status in Classic Constructed. Also a very, very powerful hero. But once again, you can play her in other formats like Blitz, Commoner, and Ultimate Pit Fight. So just keep that in mind when considering the Monarch decks. You also have the Tales of Aria Blitz starter decks. We have Briar, the Elemental Rune Blade. We have Oldham, the Elemental Guardian. And last, and my personal favorite, Lexi, the Elemental Ranger. Now, none of these heroes have achieved Living Legend status, so all of these are viable pickups no matter what format you want to play and you know just for 
all of these in general, I want to say I do have individual reviews of every single one of the decks, every single product we're talking about today. I do have reviews of all of that stuff. I will include links in the description down below if you would like to go over these in fine detail. If you're like, oh, that, uh, that Lexi looks promising. Maybe I want to check out the whole deck. Well, I do have a video on that going over all of these. Long story short, I think these are all fantastic options. You can't really go wrong. Um, and these are great companion pieces to the sets in which they were, were released. So if you picked up this Lexi deck, you might want to pick up some Tales of Aria to accompany it to support this hero. So once again, highly recommended. You should be able to find these for about $12 USD. And last but certainly not least, for the Blitz starter decks, we have the uh, Draconic Ninja Phi, as well as the Draconic Illusionist Dromai. Now, I personally really, really love both of these decks and both of these heroes. These are currently the newest Blitz starter decks paired with the Uprising set. And I think Uprising, honestly, is one of the best Flesh and Blood sets out there. It is absolutely phenomenal. And both of these heroes are quite good. In particular, Phi is an absolute powerhouse. So I highly recommend both of these. I would say out of these two, the Phi deck is more beginner friendly, where the Dromai deck is a little bit more, I don't know, complicated, I will say. It's more of a controlling deck. So if you like the controlling style, you might like this deck. Also, she's awesome. She is just a super cool character. She summons dragons. In addition to the Blitz starter decks, you also have access to this product. This is the Classic Battles Reinar versus Dorinthia product. Now, like I said, I have a full review going over this product. I do recommend it for new players of Flesh and Blood. This product is about $50 MSRP, but you can find it for significantly lower than that. And I would say if you can find it for around like 40 bucks or less, it is absolutely fantastic. These decks were built specifically to teach players how to play Flesh and Blood. They are very well matched against each other, though I do think the Dorinthia deck is just a, just a little bit better. But um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Two ready to build decks. There's a little lore book. There's some really shiny, nice cold foil cards in here. And we'll talk about cold foils in just a second. But um, I do highly recommend this product. And also, it's probably the easiest one to get into, right? Where the other ones you have to buy like a couple decks if you want to learn with a, you know, a friend or family member. But this, you just buy this and you're good to go. Now the last starter product I wanna talk about are the ones I think you should avoid. And that's because they are out of print and very expensive. And the cards inside, well, you can find for significantly cheaper. And that is the original Welcome to Race hero decks. We have Bravo, The Guardian, we have Dorinthia, the warrior. We have Katsu, the ninja. And then last but not least, Reinar, the brute. And like I said, these decks are basically, they contain Welcome to Wraith cards. And you can still find Welcome to Wraith Unlimited for fairly cheap. And um, these decks themselves are very expensive for what they are. I would, I would recommend avoiding these unless you are a collector who wants to have a complete collection of everything. Otherwise, go, go buy any of the other products I talked about any of the Blitz starter decks, the Classic Battles box set, or just the free Ira Welcome decks, all of those are so much better. These are great decks, and these are personally how I learned to play, but the problem is, is they're very expensive. I, I would pass on these if you're a new player. All right, so those are the starting products I would recommend to you, but we're still gonna talk about all of the sets so far, all of the booster sets, and there are, I believe, eight that we're gonna talk about today. There's also one other thing that I wanna talk about before we get into that, and that's the big difference between the booster um, edition. So we have unlimited product, and we also have first edition product. And I'll talk about the differences right now. So for the most part, first edition product has cold foils and special alternate art versions, whereas unlimited just has rainbow foil versions of those cards that are cold foil. That's literally the only difference, right? Other than the price, the only difference is that Unlimited has rainbow foils, first edition has cold foils and alternate art stuff. Now, starting with the set Uprising and going forward, there is no Unlimited or first edition. It's just, it's just the one edition and it has all of the cold foils and all of the alternate art stuff and it's fantastic. But for the older sets before Uprising, it's really important to note that because you might look at a booster box of Welcome to Wraith first edition or also known as alpha and see it's worth many thousands of dollars. And you might be like, oh, why is it worth that much compared to the unlimited edition? Does it have special cards in it? It just has cold foil version and, and it's just really 
rare. So it's really rare and has cold foil versions, but if you buy the unlimited booster box, it's literally the exact same functional cards. And so now you might be thinking, hmm, what are cold foil cards? How do they differ than rainbow foil cards? Well, I actually have an example for you right here. This is an example from the latest set, Uprising. So this card is the Heat Wave. And as you can see, this is a shiny rainbow foil version card. So what people just traditionally consider like foils, this is what a rainbow foil is. And so here is a cold foil version of that card. I took it out of the sleeve so you can get the proper effect on this because it's a little, it's a little difficult. Oh, there we go. It's a little difficult to get in my studio lights, but there you go. You can kind of see that it's like this subtle, really, really nice looking, almost metallic foiling. Looks very, very good. These are the big chase cards of Flesh and Blood, these cold foil versions. Now, whether or not you prefer the cold foil or the rainbow foil is up to you. Just know that older editions of Flesh and Blood, prior to Uprising, you can only get the cold foils in the first edition, rainbow foils in the unlimited edition. Starting with Uprising, you can get them both in the same set. All right. Now let's start talking about some booster sets. We're gonna go in chronological order, starting with Welcome to Wraith. And right now I wanna note how you tell the difference between a first edition booster box and an unlimited booster box. It's really easy. Unlimited literally has a red banner that says it right here, unlimited. So that's how you can tell if it's an unlimited booster box or if it's first edition. First edition doesn't have this but Unlimited does. So this is Welcome to Wraith. This was the very first Flesh and Blood set. You can still find this pretty readily available here in the United States, at least at a pretty cheap price. And I think this set is amazing to learn how to play Flesh and Blood, especially if you can get the booster boxes for pretty cheap, like 60 to 70 bucks is fantastic. There are staples in this set and it's just a ton of fun to play, both you know constructed, but also limited draft and sealed and we'll talk about what sets you can do draft and sealed in and what sets you can't but welcome to wraith is a great way to start it has the uh warrior the brute the ninja and the guardian next up we have arcane rising this is one of my favorite sets next to uprising and this one introduced the arcane mechanic now here and, and Welcome to Wraith, we still don't have the talent system. We don't have Shadow Elemental or Draconic yet. These are just kind of like the base versions of heroes, but they're still really good. There are heroes in this set and Welcome to Wraith that are still meta viable and still very, very strong. So in particular, this set has Viserai, who is a top contender currently in the meta, as well as Dash, who is always like pretty good, as well as Kano. And then Azalea, who's a personal favorite of mine, but she's not as good. So this set is fantastic. It has some absolute staples of Flesh and Blood, including Art of War and Command and Conquer, as well as the Arcanite Skullcap, and features the uh, Ranger, the Wizard, the Mechanologist, and the Runeblade classes. And that brings us to Crucible of War. So Crucible of War is the very first expansion set for Flesh and Blood. This set is not made for Draft and Sealed. And I didn't talk about it for Arcane Rising, but Arcane Rising was made for Draft and Sealed. You can buy that set and you can draft it and play Sealed and have fun with a lot of friends, you know, just using the booster packs as game pieces, right? So Crucible War, you can't. This has support for all eight of the previous classes that I talked about that appeared in Welcome to Wraith and Arcane Rising. And as such, this is just kind of like a set that supplements those eight classes. I still think it's a really fun set, but this is one that I would recommend not picking up until you've delved into a main set yet and figured out kind of what you want to do with your flesh and blood career. But it's just, it's just fun too. So like you have a chance to pull, you know, something cool for all of the heroes, at least up to that point. So yeah, I do recommend this, but not for beginning players, just wait and uh, get one of the uh, main sets first. Now we have Monarch, an absolutely landmark set for Flesh and Blood because this set introduced the talent system. We have Light and Shadow. And like I said, the, the four heroes in this, two of them are so good that they're very close to attaining Living Legends. So keep that in mind when buying Monarch. This is a set that has very powerful cards, but also some heroes that aren't playable in Classic Constructed, though they are playable, like I said, in other formats if you like to delve into more casual and multiplayer formats. So I do recommend this set, but 
with those caveats that there are some heroes in here that will attain living legend status but this is a absolutely legendary set and um you know formed the foundation for the talent system shadow and light and as such like i said this set has the light warrior the light illusionist shadow brute and shadow runeblade next up is tales of aria just like we talked about with those starter decks this set has the elemental ranger the elemental runeblade and the elemental guardian i love this set it's an absolutely fantastic set for draft and uh, sealed though um, it can get a little samey after a little while but I still think it's absolutely fantastic and it's definitely worth experiencing at least a few times um, as a set it's absolutely gorgeous one of my favorite sets and um, yeah I would recommend this set for a new player especially if you are interested in any of those three heroes like I said the uh, elemental uh, ranger runeblade and guardian Next up, we have a festival. This is Everfest. This set is the second expansion set for Flesh and Blood, and as such, it is not a draft and sealed set. Just like Crucible of War, this is a set that you might wanna pick up after you've already kind of established yourself as a player. It's also the first set to use paper booster packs, which are really, really nice. Like, honestly, they're really nice to open up and also just, you know, better for the environment. Uh, this set overall is just a really fun set. It's themed around the Everfest Carnival, there are support for all of the classes, including the Illusionist class that was introduced in Monarch. So you have, you know, just support for everyone. It's a good time. It's a grand old time. So great set to supplement your flesh and blood experience, but not one that I would start with. And that takes us to our most recent set, Uprising. I think Uprising is one of their best sets of all time. It is an absolutely fantastic limited experience, both in draft and sealed and the constructed format that this set kind of helped create is very, very open. The, the heroes in here are very powerful. Like I said, we have Fi, the Draconic Ninja, Dromai, the Draconic Illusionist, but we also have Icelander, the elemental wizard that uses ice. And so what makes that really interesting is like, there are these two Draconic heroes as well as the ice elemental hero, but it's still a really, really fun, and um, engaging draft and limited experience. All three of those heroes are fantastic. And I think this is probably one of the best sets you can start out with because one, it's the newest set. Two, this is the first set to get rid of the first edition and unlimited. So there, it's just the one edition. So no matter what, when you buy a booster box, you have a chance to hit some really nice cold foils and there's really cool dragons and it's just absolutely great flavor. So out of all of the sets, um, which one do I recommend? It's really up to you and what heroes you saw that interest you. But I think this one's a great one just because of, I think it's just a fantastic set and the heroes are all very, very good. So those were the main booster sets. We have one more to talk about. This is History Pack 1 and this is an all reprint set. And so this set is a little bit confusing depending on what edition you're talking about. And what do I mean by that? Well, this set is the first set to release for an international non-English market. So that means that in addition to having an English release, there's also Italian, French, German, and Spanish. And now those versions, the non-English versions, have what is called a black label version that has black bordered cards that also has like foils and such in that language. However, those foils and cold foils are only limited to specific cards in the set, so not every card can be foil. And the English version just has white bordered non-foil cards. Now the cards available in this set are from the first three Flesh and Blood sets, Welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, and Crucible of War. Like I said, they are all white bordered. And um, would I recommend this set to a new player? Yeah, I would actually. You can actually buy this and build like a couple decks out of the cards inside. And they'll have staples, like good cards in them. Would I recommend it over something like Uprising? I, I don't know. I think it's really close, honestly. Uprising, you'll have a more tailored, direct experience. Um, whereas this one, it's kind of just scattershot. Like, just here's a bunch of great cards for, you know, the first eight heroes. Also, like I said, there's no foils or anything like that in the white border version. Those black label versions in those other four languages, Spanish, French, German, and Italian, they do have some fancy alternate art, really, really cool stuff in them but those are for those other languages, not for the English version. Would I recommend this? Like I said, yeah, I would. Would I also recommend something like Uprising? 
Yeah, I would. And I would probably recommend Uprising a little bit over this just because you can buy an Uprising Blitz starter deck and then buy some Uprising booster boxes to supplement that and you can kind of like grow your experience. But if you just want to dive in head first and you're just like, yeah, give me, just give me a bunch of random stuff. Here you go. And that's going to do it for the video. Basically, I would recommend looking at those Ira welcome decks. See if your LGS has them for free because that's going to be the best way to just learn how to play. It's free. If they don't have them, look into getting those Blitz starter decks or the classic battles box set. Those are going to be the easiest ways. If you're the kind of person who just wants to get into the game with booster boxes and try to get like chase cards and that kind of stuff, you really can't go wrong with any of the non expansion sets. Um, but I would recommend stuff like Welcome to Wraith or maybe even Uprising over some of the other ones, just because I think they're a little bit easier to get into. Um, and also I think the history pack is a pretty decent way to get into the game as well. But personally, I would recommend starting with any of the starter products. You really can't go wrong with any of them. I think they're all just absolutely fantastic. Just pick whatever heroes you like the most and give it a shot. Flesh and Blood is the kind of game where you can really just express yourself through your choice of heroes and equipment and all of this kind of stuff. For the super high-end competitive stuff, yeah, there are like meta decks. There are gonna be decks that are better than others, but at the like more casual level, if you wanna play multiplayer like Ultimate Pit Fight, you can just really play whatever you want and just have an absolute blast with your friends. If you wanna be that like, you know, tournament grinder, go into the Pro Tour, go into Worlds, you can do that too. And Flesh and Blood is the kind of game where you can do all of these things, possibly even at the same time. If there's any takeaway that you have from this video is that I really believe that you should just try it out. The game is fantastic. It's really easy to get into it. And you know, unless you're gonna be going playing at the top level with the top level decks, it's really not that bad. If you just wanna play casually with friends, there are pretty easy ways to get into the game. If you liked this video, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to the channel or checking out our merch store, redzonerogue.com. In the description down below, I have custom merch for all card gamers out there. If you like anime card games, if you like Flesh and Blood, I have merch for you. Dragon Shield custom sleeves through a partnership uh, between me and Dragon Shield. I have my own custom play mats. We're gonna have shirts available soon. Not, not this shirt, but different shirts available soon. So if you'd like to support the channel, check that out. Or you can directly support me by visiting my Patreon. Links of all that stuff in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you stick around on the channel and I'll see you next time.